In today's video, we're diving into the life of the talented and beautiful Alyssa Milano. Known for her iconic roles in Who's the Boss? and Charmed, Alyssa has been a beloved figure in Hollywood for years. We're covering everything you need to know about Alyssa Milano's partner, children, house tour, car collection, net worth in 2024, and more. Join us as we explore the personal and professional journey of Alyssa Milano, offering you an exclusive look into her family life and luxurious lifestyle. Whether you're a devoted fan or just curious about her story, this video has all the details you need. Alyssa Milano is an American actress, producer, activist, and former singer. She has played Samantha Maselli in Who's the Boss, Jennifer Mancini in Melrose Place, Phoebe Hallowell in Charmed. Born, December 19, 1972, age 51 years, Bensonhurst, New York, United States. Spouse, David Buglieri, M. 2009, John Tate, M. 1999 1999. Marriage location, New Jersey, United States. Awards, Kids Choice Award for Favorite Female TV Star, More. Nominations, Kids Choice Award for Favorite Female TV Star, More. Alyssa Milano Net Worth $4 Million. Early Life. Alyssa Jane Milano was born in the Bensonhurst neighborhood of New York City's Brooklyn Borough on December 19, 1972, the daughter of fashion designer and talent manager Lynn Milano and film music editor Thomas M. Milano. She is of Italian descent and has a brother named Corey, who is a decade younger. She was raised Catholic. Career. 1980-1996 Milano began her career at age 7, when her babysitter, without notifying her parents, took her to an audition for the national touring company of Annie. She was one of four selected from more than 1,500 girls. During the course of her work in the play, Milano and her mother were on the road for 18 months. After returning to New York, Milano appeared in television commercials and performed several roles in off-Broadway productions, including the first American musical adaptation of Jane Eyre. While accompanying a friend from Annie to the office of a New York agent, the agent signed Milano. She does not feel that growing up in front of the camera harmed her childhood and has said, I love my family very much, they've really backed my career. I consider myself to be normal, I've got to clean my room and help in the kitchen. In August 1984, Milano made her film debut in the coming-of-age drama Old Enough, which she recalled as a great way of starting out. The film was screened at the Sundance Film Festival, where it won first prize. Milano auditioned as the daughter of Tony Danza's character on the sitcom Who's the Boss? After winning the part, she and her family moved to Los Angeles, where the show was produced. It premiered on ABC on September 20, 1984. Throughout Who's the Boss, Milano developed a close relationship with co-star Danza. Commenting on their early years together, Danza observed, she was just the sweetest little girl of all time. She became much like my daughter. The series established Milano as a teen idol and provided her opportunities for other roles. Her education was split between school and an onset tutor with whom Milano would work for three hours a day. At age 12, Milano co-starred in Commando as Jenny Matrix, the daughter of John Matrix, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Subsequently, she starred in the children's film The Canterville Ghost, which did not achieve much praise or attention and Variety magazine noted in its review, Milano as the catalyzing daughter Jennifer adapts to the ghostly Sir Simon without a qualm, that, of course, is the true charm of the story, but Milano doesn't exhibit enough presence to match the droll, charming Gilgood. A few years later this film was shown in Japan, prompting a producer to offer Milano a five-album record deal. Milano's albums, which she described as bubblegum pop, scored platinum in the country, though she later criticized their musical quality. She has noted her love of English electronic band Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark, OMD, during her teens. On stage, Milano starred in Tender Offer, a one-act play written by Wendy Wasserstein, all night long by American playwright John O'Keefe, and the first American musical adaptation of Jane Eyre. She returned to the theater in 1991, producing and starring in a Los Angeles production of Butterflies Are Free from December 26, 1991, to January 19, 1992. Milano starred in two 1988 television films, Crash Course and Dance Till Dawn. 
Both projects allowed her to work alongside close personal friend Brian Bloom, who worked with his brother Scott with her in episodes of Who's the Boss. This working camaraderie would later expand in 1993 when Milano made a cameo appearance in Bloom's film The Webbers. She produced a teen workout video, Teen Steam, and achieved some fame outside the U.S. with her music career, which lasted until the early 1990s. Even though she scored platinum in Japan, Milano had no interest to pursue a music career in the United States, I'm not interested in crossing over. I'd much rather have it released where it's appreciated than laughed at. Simultaneously, she wrote a weekly column, called For Melissa, with love for the teen magazine Teen Machine. Milano played a teenage prostitute in the 1992 independent film Where the Day Takes You. The film, which focuses on a group of young runaway and homeless teenagers, was shot on and around Hollywood Boulevard and was met with positive critical reception. It was nominated for the Critics Award at the Deauville Film Festival and won the Golden Space Needle Award at the Seattle International Film Festival. Although Milano feared that viewers would only recognize her as the girl from Who's the Boss, she was noticed by the media, which helped her land the role of Amy Fisher in the high-profile TV movie Casualties of Love, The Long Island Lolita Story, one of three TV films based on Fisher's shooting of Mary Jo Buttafoco. Milano said that her portrayal of Fisher in the film, which was based on the Buttafoco's point of view, was the least Alyssa of anything done. The film was shot from November, December 1992. She welcomed the cancellation of the series, as she was ready to move on to other roles and enthusiastic to showcase what she was able to do. Looking back on eight years of playing the same role, Milano commented, Creatively, it's been very frustrating. I gave her more of a personality. I changed her wardrobe, cut her hair, anything to give her new life. In the early 1990s, Milano auditioned for nearly every film role in her age bracket, including B-movies, and finally tried to shed her nice girl image by appearing nude in several erotic films targeted at adults, such as Embrace of the Vampire, Deadly Sins and Poison Ivy 2, Lily. She said the nude appearances taught her to begin requiring a nudity clause in her contracts giving her full control over all her nude scenes. In a 1995 interview, she explained her motivation for some explicit scenes in Embrace of the Vampire, I'm not going to say that I was manipulated into doing things that I didn't want to do. I did it because it was a woman director and I felt protected. And I learned a lot as far as knowing where the camera is and what coverage they need so that it's not all explicit. She starred in other roles, such as Candles in the Dark, Confessions of a Sorority Girl, The Surrogate, To Brave Alaska and Fear, which did not receive very positive reviews, although Jack Matthews of the Los Angeles Times called Milano's performance in Fear very good. Personal Life Milano was involved with actor Corey Hyam from 1987 to 1990. Milano and her parents, together with his manager at the time, unsuccessfully tried to get Hyam help for his addiction. In 1993, she became engaged to actor Scott Wolf, but they broke off their engagement the following year. She later revealed in August 2019 that she had undergone two abortions while in the relationship with Wolf. In 1998, Milano sued adult websites for publishing faked nude photographs of her. On January 1, 1999, Milano married singer Sinjin Tate from alternative rock band Remy Zero. They separated on November 20, 1999, and were divorced on December 1, 1999. In a 2004 interview, Milano explained how she deals with her dyslexia, I've stumbled over words while reading from teleprompters. Sir John Gielgud, whom I worked with on the Canterville Ghost years ago, gave me great advice. When I asked how he memorized his monologues, he said, I write them down. I use that method to this day. It not only familiarizes me with the words, it makes them my own. After a year of dating, Milano became engaged to CAA agent David Buglieri in December 2008. They were married at Buglieri's family home in New Jersey on August 15, 2009. They had a son on August 31, 2011, and a daughter on September 4, 2014. In 2015, Milano sold her condominium in West Hollywood and moved to Bell Canyon, California, where she owns land and her then nine horses, eight chickens, two rabbits, and five dogs. In 2017, Milano's $10 million lawsuit against her business manager resulted in a cross-complaint.